As you can see, I have on my new Hireway mask. There's a lot going on about the virus and uh, COVID-19 and protecting ourselves. Uh, I want you to know, particularly in our community, we are the most susceptible, the most vulnerable to this disease. And once we've contacted, we have the worst outcomes of any group. And so I really want you to continue uh, to take care of yourself. Those basic things of washing your hands, sanitizing, wearing masks when you're going out. For my senior citizens, making sure that you don't just let all these people roll up on you with no mask, hands not clean, uh, and really consider how often you go out. So again, I know I'm not a doctor, but I'm your pastor. I love you and I want you to be as safe as you can possibly be. Uh, so please do that. Now, I also want to just share with you some of the things that are going on in the life uh, of the church. We are preparing the church to open on the second Sunday in June. We are not quite certain about what times that will be. That will be determined by how many we're able to safely place in the church along the way. And so we're working on that. You'll have plenty of time in terms of, of knowing what times we will worship at. Uh, I do want to say to you, if you are in that high risk group, 65, 70, 75, uh, you are so loyal in the church. I want you to be extra safe. I want you to be extra safe. I'm going to share with you how extra safe I want you to be. Now, you know, my mom has gone to be with the Lord, but my mother-in-law is 80 years old. My mother-in-law will not be here in this worship on the second Sunday because we don't think that's the best thing for her to do. She's clearly in the, in the most a vulnerable demographic and so we want to continue to move forward so again we think it, it it'll be safe but viruses don't respect persons we're going to sanitize we're going to disinfect we're going to do so many things there's someone at the door we're going to do so many things so that uh so that we are able to make the church as safe as possible what we'll ask you to do is please follow the instructions that we give you. We know that when we return, everyone's gonna wear masks. We know that there'll be a, only a certain number able to go to the restrooms, that we'll be sanitizing continually. We know that we won't have congregational singing. We can't have a virus and have everybody standing up and singing. We know that we're not gonna be hugging and welcoming everyone the way we once have done. We know that those things are gonna change, at least in the immediate future. We no, we won't be passing in an offering basket the way we've done before. But all of those things we are working on, and we want you to know that those things are in progress. Here's what we want you to do. One is pray for us as we listen and hear and talk uh, as staff and pastors in the life of the church. Please pray for us when we meet together for our town hall meeting on the 28th of this month, the 28th of May, that's a Thursday at 7 p.m., you'll be able to share with us the things that will make you comfortable in coming back into the life of the church. I want you to know we're just going to have one town hall meeting where we will record it and make it available so that if you're not able to see it on that Thursday night, you'll be able to view it uh, at a time that's convenient uh, for you. So we're going to do our very best to share uh, those things with you. So those are some of the things that are happening just as we prepare for the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis and getting back into the life of our church. Saints, the church never closed. It never closed because it's the church of God. Our gathering gives us energy and joy to praise God. So I can't wait to be in worship with you and see what God's going to do. I also thank God for the many new people because we haven't been able to be in worship. Those of you who join us online, those of you who are coming to Bible studies, we have more people in Bible studies on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Sunday school than we actually have people who are meeting in those groups. So we're going to continue to do those things even when we come back uh, for uh, Bible study and Sunday school at whatever time. Sunday school will not happen on the first Sunday back. The first Sunday back and until we to do more things, we're simply worshiping together. Those are the only things, no nursery, no Sunday school, just the worship time uh, together. So again, wanted to make sure that you do those things uh, and, and invite you to be in dialogue. You can always email me, you can call me, and uh, I will try to respond as quickly uh, as I can. So uh, I also want to remind you uh, that life, is, as unpredictable as it is, continues to move forward. 
We have members in our church who are sick. Uh, I think of Sister Evelyn Moore, who's hospitalized, Sister Beverly Galley, who is recuperating. I think of those who are in nursing homes, those who've lost loved ones, uh, who are still in the midst of that misery and ache of Hannah. We pray for you. We pray for you and we lift up your name. We also want to remember that our church is still trying as best we can to be in ministry with the least, the last, the lost, the unfortunate in our community. On next Saturday, the fourth Saturday, we have our food giveaway. You'll hear more information about that. There are going to be some changes just in how we organize ourselves so that we can be in compliance uh, with the Houston Food Bank and their uh, roles for us. And so everybody who will participate will have to abide by those, but that's just good order. So that doesn't bother us at all. We're looking for a new ministry uh, that's going to uh, uh, bless our community. Uh, men folk, I'll be talking with you about that because I want to ask the men to step up once a month, once a month to serve for about two hours on a Saturday. And I'll talk to you and send information out about that one Saturday, two hours earlier in the morning. We can bless so many people uh, in our community. No matter what's going on, we still have to do ministry. We still have to do ministry and bless people's lives. One other thing I want to share with you just before taking some questions is about our scholarship. Remember, uh, there was a deadline in April for turning your scholarship eligible. We know what's happened from March to April. So we've extended the scholarship deadline to May 31st. Please go on the website, uh, uh, highwaychurch.org backslash forms. Fill that form out so we can have all of our young people. We want to bless you, but we can't bless you if we don't know. And don't show up after the ship has left the shore. Here we can help you the time has passed. So, know those things are important. Now, I, I, I want to hear from you. Pastor, one of the questions is, will Bible study still be live on Tuesday? Yes. Bible studies will still be live on Tuesday, online and in person once, uh, once we begin. I'm not quite certain when we're going to start back with the Bible studies the same week that we start worship. We've got to look at spaces because a large group of people in a small space so we'll be talking about that you'll get more information about that on the 28th but here's what i want you to know about bible study tuesday at 10 a.m wednesdays at 7 p.m will always be on zoom always at some point we will begin to meet again in person and it will still be on zoom so you will be able if you're not able to come to church and you've gotten in the habit of joining with us then you can do that and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity to stretch me and the same thing for wednesday night bible study when service resumes will there be two services I'm not quite certain. There will be more than one. There may be three services. Uh, they will be shorter. As you know, what we're doing now online is much briefer than what we did before because there are a lot of things that we won't be doing in that service. We won't be taking offering up in the way uh, that we would normally do. We won't be welcoming to the family. And so worship is going to be different. Uh, it will be more compact. Uh, as I said, we won't have congregational singing. Uh, because of the virus and things. So I am certain that there will be a minimum of two worship services and maybe more. Will there be an update regarding confirmation classes? There will be an update regarding confirmation classes. That will come to you from Sister Aziza Mim. We'll probably pick up from where we were with those young people and, uh, and we'll give you information about that, but that group will be confirmed this year. If our kids have been missing any of the um, information, what's the best way to connect to make sure our kids and youth are engaged in all of the ministry that is happening now? First of all, reach out to Sister Aziza Mims. You go to the church website, click on ministry, go to children. You'll see all of the information that's there. Reach out to her so that she can reach out to you. And thank you for asking that question. Please connect. Please connect with us in the places in which we are trying so deeply uh, to connect to you. We're having Children's Church on Sundays. We're having a meeting with parents on Thursday. All this is by Zoom. We're meeting and, and sharing information. So please reach out uh, to the director of our children and teens of ministry. Uh, and you can always reach out to the Pastor Edith. But if you want the direct homeschool, then Sister Aziz. 
Aziza is the one to reach out to. Are there counseling services being offered to individuals and couples through Jones? Yes, so let's, let's talk about that. So the counseling, again, would have to be done through Zoom. So we have a, a relationship with Chris Samaritan Counseling Center who are licensed Christian counselors. Uh, and so for ongoing deep uh, counseling for families and situations, we're happy to connect you with that. But if there's an issue that you want to begin by talking with your pastors about, simply reach out to me by email or call. I'll give you a call and then we can set up times when we might be able to do that uh, through Zoom meetings or some other Skype Zoom, some other thing along the way to help us meet together and talk through that. And so again, I have a couple who had uh, who were scheduled to be married this month. And so working through that, we've just we've got to work our way through it. But to answer your question specifically, yes, counseling is available uh, through professionals, through your pastors, and through the church. So just reach out to me and let me know what your needs are. Pastor, this question is, what will social distancing look like for the kids and children when children's um, church returns? And will the nursery still be open? When we return in the month of June, there will be no children's church, there will be no nursery. I have no time frame for when that will start. We are being strategic about that and very, very, very safe. One of the things we'll be looking for forward to as an indicator is when our schools start back. When we see our schools and daycare centers opening up again and parents feeling comfortable enough to allow their kids to go back to school, their children to go to daycare, then we'll begin to look at how we unravel, uh, I'm sorry, reopen those ministries. When we start back in worship, what we will have is worship and everyone will be in worship together. Infants and parents bring them, children and teens, we will all be in that worship service for 45 minutes to an hour in that worship service. On the second Sunday in June when we open, will there be a limit of number of people in the building? There will be a limit of number of people in the building. We haven't determined that quite yet because we've got to do some things in the building to make sure we've done everything to keep a person safe. A part of what we will talk about on the 28th is what that number will be uh, and the times in which we will have worship. And then we'll figure out, clearly we have to figure out who's here, who's not, those kinds of things. What about people who show up? Well, that's no different than every other church that's gonna open. So we're working on that. Don't have the answers for that today, but there will be a limit of people who will come. Everyone will have to sanitize. Everyone will have their temperature taken as they enter the church. It's a non-invasive uh, temperature. Uh, it doesn't touch your skin, but it'll help us. We're gonna say to you, if you're sick, if you're not feeling well, please don't come to worship. We're gonna ask all of those things that you would normally expect someone who's being uh, as safe as possible to do. And we'll talk about the numbers as well. i give you an example. We will not have a choir. We're not gonna put 50 people in the room and have them singing toward another group of people uh, in the life of the church. So that won't happen. I don't know when we will have a choir. Those things, I just have no idea. But we're going to have music. We're going to praise the Lord. And we're going to do it in a safe way that invites us to be a part of, of deep worship of the Lord. Will there be a vacation Bible study in summer camp? We will not have vacation Bible school uh, this year or summer camp. Uh, as it relates to the, the district or conference camp, that has already been canceled, so there is no Lakeview uh, summer camp. And at this time, I don't feel that we're ready uh, to plan a vacation Bible school uh, and a camp here in the church. So the answer is for this year, no. Pastor, what are other ways that we can um, continue to connect with the church throughout the week? I know you mentioned Bible study earlier. Are there other opportunities we can connect and grow? There are. Uh, there is there's prayer meeting now that's on Zoom. Uh, that's on I got Monday on Tuesday evenings. At 6.30, uh, you can come uh, to the prayer ministry and pray for people in the life of the church. I've said to you in some ways, if you are a seamstress or, or whatever you are, if you're a man, <laughs> if you can sew, <laughs> seamster, if you can sew and make masks uh, for the church, that would be great. Uh, 
we have some members who are doing that and who will collect them and bring them to the church. The church will make sure that they're all London. All of them are new, but we'll do that so that people can have those. Uh, because when we return, uh, a person's Everyone who comes in will have to have one. A lot of us have the disposable ones, but with the ones that are made, you can wash them and, and, and have that done. That would be a blessing. Uh, we have uh, our congregational care ministry, which Sister Joyce leads, is taking excellent care of our sick and shut in. So thank you for that. Again, when we have our food giveaways, if you want to volunteer and you're not in that high risk group, we don't want you to volunteer if you're likely uh, to be exposed and in, uh, in any way that might be detrimental uh, or more detrimental to your health. So you can, you can co connect with us in that way. Uh, when we start back to uh, worshiping, we're going to really need persons who are able to volunteer in our, in our church office, uh, persons who can volunteer on a consistent basis, whether maybe that's two hours any one day of the week or four hours to help us with phone calls and managing, uh, uh, working with people. We're going to set up a, a ministry for that. And so if you have time on a consistent basis, we, we've got to have people who can come and say, you know, you can count on me on Wednesdays or Thursdays or for this period of time. And then we can plan the church's administrative schedule around that. And that allows us to do more ministry for more people uh, in in the community. So that, those are some of the ways in which you uh, can uh, share and connect with the church and grow uh, in. And I, I did mention we also have places for the youth uh, to connect. Go to the church's website. If you haven't been there, thehigherwaychurch.org. It's new. It's refreshed. It has more information than you can need. But all of the questions that you're asking me, you can find most of the answers to that on the church's website. Can we purchase the mask with the logo? This is my first time having my hands on a mask with the logo. It's cool. I don't know the answer. Oh. I don't know the answer to that question. Enid, can these? We will have these for you. You don't have to purchase them. Look what happens when you give. <laughs> Look what happens when you are generous and with generosity. And so we're going to give these. And listen, by the way, you know how it works, right? We start off one per person. You can't take them to your uncle, your auntie, your cousin, all right, until we make sure everybody in the church who wants one has one. So thank you for asking that question because I didn't know the answer. This is the first time I've had one. We have your safety in heart and mind. Another question um, from Khalil. Um, what can we do to serve? So again, uh, I, I, I'm going to re repeat the ways in which, in the ways which one, let me share with you something that, that really is a way you can help in the life of the church. You know, we got a building that's 20,000 square feet. You know, I clean this building most of the time. We have someone who comes in from time to time. But if we had some persons who say, hey, I'd be happy to come over, spend three or four hours at the church cleaning the church or weeding out this flower bed that's outside uh, of the church or doing some things. Uh, I've cleaned the windows around the church because sometimes I'm here and I just want to do something. I've taken a, a, a broom mop thing and cleaned all the windows around. So there are a lot of things that if you call and say, I'm willing to do these things and I have some time, then we can schedule you to do those things. Things. You know, as much as we clean the church and we're always doing that, dust settles, you know, cleaning rooms so that when we come to the second Sunday, we don't have to spend four days trying to clean the building up and make it ready for worship. We're already in that place. And so those are some of the ways that you can just think about all of the things you need at home in terms of cleaning, taking care of the church. Those things are needed as well. And so if you'd like to volunteer, send your name and the time that you can you can do and and say what you're able to do. If you're not able to go up a ladder, say no ladder work, <laughs> right? Uh, no heavy lifting, those kinds of, of things. Uh, that's just kind of practical things that you can do. And then I've already mentioned the food giveaways, which again will happen this weekend. Men folk, I'll send out information about another monthly way we can serve. Uh, and then online, you have the other opportunities. Here's another way. Some of you are in small groups. That is to say, you're in uh, singles ministry. You're with a group. If you know members of the church, call them at maybe once or twice a month. 
You know, when the church does that, people say, good, my church did that. But when they know that the person who sit next to them in worship remembers them, and if you have their name, you don't have the number, let us know. We want to reach out. That's a ministry in the life of the church. And so continue to work with us on that. And by the way, that cleaning part, you could help us at our Crestmont campus. If you're willing to serve, you know, we're not there most of the time. That building, we're constantly in trying to make it the best putting in the new playground equipment. It's on the ground now. And uh, in the next week, all of the new playground equipment will already be installed there. So if you want to help out in those ways and you have some time, let me know and we'll make sure we can connect you in that way. Okay, Pastor. Um, final questions. One, um, adult Sunday school. Is adult Sunday school still being offered? If so, when? And also, will we have future um, small groups coming up that people can be a part of? So... As it raised Sunday school, Sunday, adult Sunday school is happening every single Sunday by Zoom. So again, if you don't have that information, I don't remember all of those connecting points now, but if you don't have that information, go to the church's website. And so if you were in an adult Sunday school class, whether it was a Genesis class, no matter which one, if it was an adult Sunday school class, you are meeting and your teachers are rotating and leading those classes each Sunday morning. Uh, as a matter of fact, as we move to the month of of May, it is my understanding you'll have an opportunity, uh, you know, those of you who want to have the books will have books, but you'll be able to have a digital version of the lesson, so you'll be able to work in that way. So you, you're having Sunday school. Remind me of the second part of that question. Small group opportunities in the future. Again, we're going to work through what that looks like. Uh, we're going to start those back up probably in a Zoom format uh, to begin with. But let's say, for instance, uh, we have a small group. We have a sanctuary where we could have a small group meet at the church and, and maintain social distance. So we're working on that. We can't put 30 people in the fellowship hall and, and have social distancing. We can't keep people far enough. So it would either have to be here or in a small group. And so we, we'd have to work our schedules for that. But again, we are going to do small groups and begin to do some Wesley class groups and band groups. Singles ministry, I need to talk to you. So I'm going to have a Zoom meeting with my singles ministry uh, because I think you can do something that will be a blessing to you and a blessing to our church uh, in the years uh, to come. Okay, um, next question is, how can those in the high-risk group get a mask? So if you need a mask now, that is to say you simply don't have a mask, call the church. I've said this to you, and I want to say this to you. We have a group of people in the church who are willing to come to you. If you need food, if you need food, maybe you have a prescription you need to have filled. There's some need you have connect with us and let us know. We have a ministry that's prepared to meet your needs. And so let's just simply say, forget these masks. Just say you don't have any masks and you need masks. The church doesn't have, we don't have N95s, right? We have those kind of uh, basic surgical masks uh, that you have. We don't have 10,000 of them, but we have some. Uh, we're, we're ordering more of those, and, and we're waiting like other people for those to come in. But if you let us know, we'll have someone bring you those, right? Or you let us know we'll be here in the church for when we're here in the office. You can come by and pick them up. Again, remember, saints, I can't give you a box. I can't because there's so many people, but you shouldn't be in a place where you don't have some mask. So let us know and we can respond to uh, your needs as best we can. Pastor, what is the status of the new building? What is the Our status of the new building? Thank you for asking. So the status of the new building uh, is we met probably three, four weeks ago with the architect and with our contractor and asked them uh, to bring us to what's called the end of the design phase of the building. And they are presently doing that. What that means is this. They are now designing the building and its guts, so to speak, lights, wiring, everything that's going to be in the building. When that is done, which we believe will be done by mid-June, we are going to come to a stop, right? Because we don't know where we are. We don't know what's going to happen in this COVID. But when we come to that stop, 
And what I mean by stop there, that is to say, full stop, let's see where we are. It will, we will then have a completely designed building. That means where every light bulb, everything in, all of those things are there, final price on the building. And then what will happen after the, the building committee is met, we'll come back to the church and say, here's our reality now. Remember, when we started talking about this, our reality was quite different, right? We were meeting every Sunday. The church was doing these things. So we're going to look at our finances again. We're going to look and see, are we back in a place where we feel comfortable moving forward with this? Or do we now think, you know, maybe it's better to postpone this and let's just see what the rest of this year will be. Maybe we're going to look at this and say, let's look at this from another uh, financial perspective, a building time frame. I am not sure of that, but it's really a time for us to stop and rethink where we are. But we thought it as a, as a committee that it was very important to have a good place, right? Everything in the building is, is designed. And we know exactly what, what, where it would be. We know exactly what the building would, would entail. The members of the church are able to look at it virtually to see what that building feels like. And then like any family who comes together in an economic downturn and says, is this the best time for us to build our new house? Is this the best time for us to buy a new car? Maybe we should pay off some bills. Maybe we should wait a little longer. Or no, we feel comfortable. We feel we're in a good place. Let's move forward. So that's kind of where we are right now. Thank you for asking that question because I forgot to, to, to mention anything about it. Pastor, we have a question that um, she's asked. Will those in the higher risk group have a service of their own? I don't think that we would have a service for higher risk on their own. That would simply be bringing those at higher risk together, which seems to me would increase uh, their, their exposure, right? These are the people who are most vulnerable, and I bring them into a space together. What I'm simply saying to you is this. You have to make the determination. If you show up, I am not stopping you at the door. I am not saying you can't come to worship. I just want you to be extremely cautious. And if you feel cautious and confident that the things we're doing make you safe enough to come, you are invited to come. I just simply want you to be really comfortable, right? Some of you will say, well, I'm going to go see how that works. And I'll talk to my grandchild and see if they really were serious about you couldn't come in without a mask, that everyone had to sanitize, everyone had a fever, that no more than three people can be in the restroom at any one time. Are they really serious about that? Okay, now I feel comfortable about coming. So again, I'm not banning you from coming. I'm simply saying to you, just be extremely cautious when you make that decision. God's blessings to you. Peace of Christ be with you. Thank you for coming and sharing with me. I can't see you. Put your hands together. Come on. Eating over here, making.